Welcome to Get Sleepy, the podcast where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. I'm your host, Thomas. Thanks for tuning in. Tonight, we'll venture into the blue waters of the Pacific Ocean, just off the coast of New Zealand, and experience a day in the life of a couple of playful dolphins. Let's settle down now and get ready for our story. Just begin with some deep breaths. In for one, two, three, four, five, and out for five, four, three, two, one. Let's do that one more time. In for one, two, three, four, five, and out for five, four, three, two, one. Continue to breathe at your own pace, whatever feels most comfortable for you. As you do, Just feel that wave-like motion of the airflow, rising and falling, collecting tension with the inhale, then letting go as you exhale, and feeling that tension gradually disperse, like a wave over the shore. As you begin to make your way towards sleep, leave all your troubles behind and travel to a serene coastline. You can hear the waves gently lapping against the shore, in and out, as steady as your breathing. The tide is beginning to come in. The clear water is a beautiful blue-green color. As you gaze at the ocean, you notice a flash of movement in the sun-dappled shallows. There's a jet of bubbles, and then the heads of two dolphins emerge from the water. Their eyes are bright and curious. You watch as these young dolphins twist and turn in their graceful dance along the shore. And this is where our story begins. An albatross bobs along on the gentle waves that lap against the shore of eastern Aotearoa, also known as New Zealand. Other than its black wings and eyes, the huge bird is as white as the clouds that float overhead. Aotearoa is the Maori word often translated as a long white cloud for the formations over the Northern Ireland that helped navigators find it. You can often see beautiful wisps of white in the expanse of blue sky above the ocean here. The albatross has just finished a long morning hunt for squid and fish and is preening her feathers as she floats on the water. On land, she stands about a meter tall, 
but her impressive wingspan stretches to three times that when she's flying. She's a proud creature, strong, elegant, beautiful, and dignified. Suddenly, the albatross feels a burst of bubbles in the water underneath her tail feathers. She squawks and quickly moves away. She runs across the surface of the water as her massive wings unfurl, lifting her higher and higher into the air. Bubbles are still rippling the surface below her. Two grey snouts and two sets of curious eyes emerge. They belong to Kiri and Kai, two siblings who are members of the Big Green Water Pod, a community of almost 100 bottlenose dolphins. As they poke their heads out of the water, Kiri and Kai make playful clicking sounds. They use their blowholes to spray a fine mist and take a quick gulp of air before they duck back into the water. Kiri clicks in happiness as she dives down and spins circles around her older brother, Kai. He's an adolescent dolphin on the cusp of adulthood, while Kiri is several years younger. She's still a child, and she acts like it. Kai has spent the morning teaching his little sister how to catch fish in the shallows. This is normally their mother's job, but at the moment, she's with the nursery group. She's looking after their younger sister, who is a newborn. Kiri does all right, but she still has to practice. Although she is making progress, she prefers chasing the fish to catching them. She has to learn how to drive them out of the water and onto the sandy shore. But instead, she slides over the sand underwater as though she's playing a game. Kai has mixed feelings about babysitting his sister. Part of him would rather be out swimming with his friends. After all, in a year or two, he'll be a fully grown dolphin. The older ones roam the borders of their pods, keeping an eye out for danger. Some dolphins travel in pairs, while others go off on their own, moving from pod to pod as they look for mates. Kai is not independent yet, and he has to put his family first. When he's teaching his sister how to catch fish, he takes the job seriously. But Kiri has a more playful attitude. Instead of hunting for food, she prefers spending her days chasing other marine life or finding pretty seashells to play with. She's still small and has a bit of baby fat. Her older brother has been trying to get her swimming up to speed so she can keep up with the rest of the pod. Kai's just about to chirp at his sister to stop playing around when he feels a vibration along his jaw. A subtle hum that's barely perceptible. It's their mother 
calling for him. She's in the middle of the pod, away from the shore. Kai swims around his sister, herding her back towards their community. They chirp a greeting to a couple of older dolphins out on patrol as they speed back to the nursery group. Kiri stops to say hello to everyone she sees. Kai has to keep poking her gently with his nose to move them along. They pass by a few of their friends and family, bobbing close to the surface, resting. Kai once heard a story from a dolphin who saw a human sleeping. Apparently humans sleep with both eyes closed and don't seem to be aware of anything as they do. The dolphin was able to swim right up to the human as they slept, drifting through the water on a peculiar floating object. Humans are so strange, Kai thinks. He watches one of his cousins flip his tail lazily to propel himself to the surface. After a gulp of air, the dolphin sinks back down and joins the rest of the pod. The group of dolphins is almost motionless, but their bodies move gently with the ocean current. The nursery group is floating just above an underwater sandbar. They're so close to the surface here that the sunlight streams through the water in elegant lines. The dolphins seem to shine in the light, in radiant shades of grey and silver. Kiri shoots through the water towards her baby sister. She nudges the small dolphin affectionately with her nose, chirping and whistling away in baby talk. Kai swims right up to their mother. She's helping another dolphin teach her baby to swim. Kai's mother greets him with a warm whistle. As they swim in a circle around the nursery group, she tells him they'll soon be moving to an area with more fish. They usually travel between the morning and afternoon hunts, especially when fish are scarce. Their mother is going to stay with the nursery group, since a lot of the babies are slow or need help. She asks Kai if he can look after Kiri for the afternoon. She knows he would rather be with his friends, but he still agrees to take care of his sister. He is the older brother after all, and he'll do his duty. Kiri is thrilled that she gets to spend the afternoon with her brother. She whistles in excitement and zooms off through the water. Kai swims after her, listening to the chorus of chirps and whistles from dolphins all around them. These sounds let the entire big green water pod know that it's time to start moving. After a short while, he loses sight of his sister, so he clicks to ask if she's all right. Kiri clicks back in response. She's playing, doing wave jumps with some other young dolphins. Now that he knows his sister is okay, 
Sky is free to explore a bit and have some fun. He spins around and dives down, making playful clicking noises. On his way down, he dodges the other dolphins in the slow-moving pod and passes through a large school of fish. It's busy near the surface, but down by the seabed, it's even busier. The deeper water is bustling with life. Huge groups of soft, transparent jellyfish float around on the currents. The jellyfish come in all kinds of colors. Blue, pink, white, purple. Hundreds of small, pink Mau Mau fish feed on the clouds of plankton that float in every drop of the coastal water. Bigger fish feed on the Mau Mau and other smaller species. Kai hums at the thought of a tasty cod, but he's on duty and he's come down here for a reason. He swims among the mountains of coral, forests of anemones, and huge dancing ribbons of seaweed until he reaches the bottom. His silver beak nudges through the silt, and some nearby crabs scuttle away. A flounder emerges from its hiding place in the sand. Kai chases the flat brown fish across the seabed, but it soon disappears, camouflaged by the sand. Kai is about to swim away when he spots a beautiful, empty clamshell lying in the sand. He picks it up and then shoots upwards back towards the surface. Once he's surrounded by the pod, he calls for Kiri with a low, unmistakable whistle. Kiri chirps and rockets through the water towards him. Kai dodges out the way and then plays along, pretending that he's trying to get away from her. But by now, Kiri has spotted the shell he's carrying. She chases after him, eager to grab it. When Kai is sure he's high enough, just a few feet from the surface, he opens his mouth. The clamshell falls from his grip and sinks down into the bluish-green depths. It moves slowly, wobbling back and forth as it drifts through the water, caught in the ocean currents. Kiri is so excited. It's as if she's never seen a shell before. She gives chase as the shell drifts downwards and catches it in her mouth. Then, she swims up close to the surface and lets go of it. Kai propels himself after the shell once more, while his little sister clicks in delight. He catches it and then returns to the surface, where he drops it again so Kiri can dive for it. They keep the game going as the pod continues to move slowly up the coast. Kai feels very clever. 
It's like he's tricking his sister into improving her skills, all through the simple addition of her favorite activity, chasing shells. The pod spends a couple of hours swimming up the coast. Eventually, the dolphins on scout duty whistle, signaling that they've found a good spot. The group comes to a halt. There are plenty of fish to be found in this large section of reef, so they can stay here for a while. Kiri and Kai find their mother with the nursery group. She nuzzles Kai lovingly. He's a little embarrassed by this affectionate gesture, but at least his friends aren't watching. There's no one around, apart from babies, mothers, and grandmothers. They're swimming at a slow, dreamy pace lost in their own world. As he swims beside his mother, Kai tells her that he still has a lot of work to do with Kiri. The lesson isn't over yet. He wants to take her hunting and show her how adult dolphins catch cod. Their mother clicks at him in amusement, and nudges Kiri, encouraging her to follow her brother. Kai whistles at Kiri to keep up with him as they head for the shallows. He listens to the clicks up and down the coast, and finds a place where they'll have a bit of space from the others. It's the perfect spot, with a sandy slope rising up out of the water towards the beach. And there are plenty of cod swimming around. He tells his sister to show him what she's learned so far. Kiri speeds off through the school of cod, whistling with joy. She's clearly having fun, but she'll never catch a fish like that. Kai sighs and tells his sister to watch him. She follows behind, chirping happily. Kai moves up and down, inching closer to the school of cod. He herds them in, so they're even more tightly packed together. They don't realize it's happening. They're reacting instinctively to his movements. Kai quickly plans what he needs to do next, and then beats the water with his tail. Then, he rushes towards the fish his fins cutting through the water. The cod try to scatter in all directions, but some are caught in the force of the currents. Kai's timing is perfect. As he moves up the sandy slope and out of the water, he sees four or five cod flopping in the sand. He picks one up with his mouth, and then slides back down the slope and into the water. Kiri swims up to him in the shallows, chattering excitedly. She gets excited about everything, but he's still pleased by her reaction. He lets her grab the fish and gulp it down. Once she's finished eating, 
he whistles in encouragement. Now it's her turn to bring him a fish. It takes a few tries, but eventually Kiri manages to catch one. When she swims towards her brother with a happy, high-pitched whistle, Kai feels a glow of pride. Once their bellies are full, they head back to the pod. They need to give their mother some time to catch fish for herself. Kai expects to see Kiri zooming around in excitement, ready to tell her family all about her adventure. But she swims slowly and looks tired. The hours of playing and chasing fish have made her sleepy. Her mother gives her a gentle nozzle. Then she tells Kai directions to a group of sleeping dolphins, so both he and his sister can get some rest. Kai wants to protest that he's not tired. But then he realizes that even the thought of swimming much further is exhausting. He follows his mother's directions and swims with Kiri to a stretch of shallow water. A few other dolphins are floating near the surface. They look like they're awake, as all dolphins keep one eye open when they sleep. But they're actually napping peacefully. Kiri is so tired that she drifts off while she's still swimming. Kai gently nudges her awake and guides her to the surface so she can take a last breath of air before settling down in the water to rest. While his sister sleeps, Kai looks up through the clear surface of the water. The sky above glows in the west, but darkness is coming from the east. He's feeling sleepy too, so he'll have a rest with his sister before he goes back to work, looking after his family and helping the pond. He rises to the surface to take a deep breath of fresh air, and then slowly sinks down next to Kiri. He closes one eye and relaxes his body. Then he feels himself drifting down through the warm water, his mind already in dreamland.